Do you have a bunch of Fataba TFHSS receivers laying around and you'd love to run dual receivers, but when you go into the menu under TFHSS for your buy menu, you only have one link button. Well, hang around and I'm going to show you how to do it today. Alright, what up dudes and dudettes. It's me, Chunky C. I am back again with the second part of this video like I told you I was going to do. Uh, if you see right here, I got my Futaba fired up. I got my ATMZ going on. Um, what I wanted to show you, um, the reason why I'm doing this video, uh, when I first bought the radio, I know it was multi-protocol and you could uh, you could bind multiple receivers to it and everything. And I noticed that when you go into fastest, um, you'll see whenever I go back into it here, that you can do a single or a dual mode and you can hit yes and you'll have two link um, you'll have two link buttons right here so that you can do a primary and a secondary receiver. But as I went down through all of these, I noticed that fastest was the only one that had that. So if I go down to fast, um, let's change it. Let's go into it and we'll take a look. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Well, that's different. That one doesn't have, let's do S F H A. Yeah, let's do this one. Well, where are we at here? Oh yeah, those do different. I'm sorry, those do those have different um, bonding methods or binding methods. Um, the fastest and the TFHSS are really the only ones that that bind like this. But anyway, the TFHSS that's what I want to talk to you today. They have uh, they only have one link right here. They don't have the option to do the dual uh, receivers. But we're going to cover it today. So what I want to do, I'm going to slightly move this out of the way here. Try to bring everything in frame here. I'm going to get my, bring the receivers back over here. So I'm going to go ahead and bind these. Go into the link screen. I'm going to start, I guess, with this one down here. It's just as good as any. Um, I'm going to hit link, cut on the receiver, and hopefully you should be able to see it link up. There we go. we got a green light. It's kind of worried there with my antenna being that close to the, to the transmitter, but we'll close that. We'll turn that one off. And we're going to do the same thing for this one right here. We're going to hit link again. Even though you'll see it's got an ID number right there. We're going to hit it again. We're going to hit link. Turn this bad boy on here. And we got the flash. And we go green. So right now both of these receivers are actually bound to this one model that's in this radio. So now if I cut this one on over here, you see I've got two green lights. Hopefully you can see that on the camera there. I've got this servo into port one, which should be my aileron. This one right here is in port seven, which is actually, I have assigned it. It's a, I think it's like channel 15 or something, because if you remember in the previous video that I did, I signed this one into mode A, which was one through eight. And this one right here, mode C, which was nine through 16. So this should be channel 15. If it's in the number seven port, it should be channel 15. I assigned channel 15 to a switch so let's see if it works. Yep. Let's see if I can pull it in. So it works. That's how you set up two of these TFHSS receivers. All right, so that's it. Um, you know, you may want to know why you would do something like this. Um, 
Uh, we covered in another uh, video, I've been saying it a lot, some folks like to take two receivers and split their airplanes so that they can have part of their controls on one side on one receiver, part of the controls on the other side on another receiver, but keep in mind that only works when you have uh, two aileron servos uh, for, you know, one for left and right and two separate elevator servos. Um, if you have something like a small trainer or uh, anything that has one elevator servo or has one aileron servo, that that's definitely not going to work. Um, the most common reason why folks would do this is to expand their channels. Um, if they have two eight channel receivers laying around and they have a big model that uh, you know they need to expand their channels they'll you know run probably your normal aileron elevator rudder throttle off of one and then the other one you may have uh, landing gear uh, retracts uh, bomb bay doors you might have lights a candy drop you know the, no telling what everybody has on there they might have a something to, to pop a canopy up on a jet and, and lower it down so um, you know, there's all sorts of reasons why you would want more channels. Uh, another common uh, reason that they would do that is they would set it up uh, where the eighth channel was an S bus on each one of them, and uh, you'd plug it into the DLPH-1, uh, which is a power block. And I would go into that, like I said, on another video uh, coming up soon. I'm going to cover that also. But uh, let me know what you think, guys. Um, you know, if you've got any ideas or any comments or uh, if I missed anything or if you guys have been running this system and you like it and, and uh, you know, it's saved your plane or, you know, it's been pretty flawless for you, let us know down in the comments. And I uh, hope this video uh, helped somebody out, gave you a little bit of knowledge today because that's what I'm all about, trying to share the knowledge that I've gotten through all the years of doing this. So, uh, you know, if you liked it, give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. And if you didn't like it, then, you know, hit that thumbs down, but do it right. Make sure you hit it twice. And until next time, peace. <laughs>